As web designers, one of the key things we need to do is ensure our sites look great across all different kinds of devices, resolutions, screen sizes, and so on. So whether you're working on mobiles, tablets, or desktops of various different sizes, we need to be able to check things out. That's where today's free tool, Responsibly, comes in super handy. You download this, install it, and you are good to go. The cool thing is, if you're working on Windows, Mac, or Linux, there's a version available for you. So let's take a look at what the app does, how it works, and how you may want to add it to your toolkit to see how useful this could actually be. So once downloaded and installed, this is what you're going to see. It'll start off with the Google website, but you can drop in your own websites to test those out. And what it effectively does is show you various different views. So let's put in one of my websites, one I'm working on at the moment. And as you can see, it now shows us what that's going to look like across those three different devices. We can scroll and interact with one, and you'll see it scrolls and interacts on all of the devices at the same time. So you can easily see what's going to happen on any device at any given time as you scroll through and interact with the site. That in itself is pretty nifty. But we have so many more options. You'll see above each viewport, we get a series of icons that allow us to do different things. We also have some options in the toolbar itself, and we're going to take a look at those in a moment. So first of all, let's take a look at what these icons do. You can refresh. You can take a quick screenshot, which will show what's on screen on that viewport at this point in time. Or you can take a full page screenshot, which will screenshot the entire page that you're currently looking at. You can then go and disable event mirroring. So in other words, if we check this option, now if we interact with this mobile version, it doesn't interact in the same way with the other devices. Just click to re-enable that, and now you'll see they all scroll together. Then we can open up the dev tools. So you can click and open those up, and you can see this will open the dev tools inside what is a typical browser environment. So you're kind of working inside a Chrome-based browser kind of thing, but just working offline. Again, let's just disable that. And then if you want to, if you've got a device that allows you to flip horizontally and vertically, like a tablet or mobile, you can click and it'll convert that over. And also we can show or hide the different rulers so we can see exactly where things are in a pixel kind of setup. Let's set that back. You can also jump over into full screen mode. So this will just show you only that environment that you're currently interacting with. Just close this down. And now you can see we can get a much better view of what this looks like on a device just a little bit larger than we can see in the sort of preview area. And again, all those icons are available at the top. So you can interact with this and see how it all works. Now, speaking of those icons, you'll notice this little eye icon. This allows us to check for anybody that's got any kind of visual impairment, like color blindness and so on. So you can open this up, and all of the normal color deficiency issues, like red, green deficiency, blue, yellow deficiency, and so on, are listed here. So you can check it out and see exactly what it would look like for anybody that has that particular visual impairment. Pretty cool. Choose a different one, and you can see what it would look like to get a kind of feel for anybody that has these kind of visual impairments. Let's just disable that, put it back. Then if you want to switch between the different devices, you've got these tabs for any or all of the different devices you've got set up. We've only got three currently, but we'll take a look at expanding that in a moment. So we can switch over to the iPad. You can switch over to the MacBook. And again, you can see we can now interact with this layout and see exactly what it's going to look like. And again, all those options are still available. So again, we could easily come in, choose one of those, and see what it would look like and how it would affect our design for anybody with that visual impairment. So that itself is pretty nifty and pretty useful. Let's close that back down and go back to where we were. But there's still lots more we can do. Now, before we dig in and take a look at these other icons, let's go in and take a look at what are called suites. So open this up, and you can see we've got Manage Suites. Now, Suites, by its very nature, is just a collection of different views that we can see on screen. So at the moment, we've got the default suite, which shows us three different devices, our mobile, tablet, and desktop. However, we can manage those. So let's go in and manage them. And you see there's our existing default suite. So now let's just say we wanted to change things over inside you. We didn't want the iPhone 12, so let's just uncheck that. So now you can see underneath we've got a bunch of different devices, mobiles, tablets, desktops, those kinds of things. You can also create your own custom ones. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So let's say for this I wanted to actually work with the iPhone 16 Plus. Let's select that, and now that's been added in. We can come out of this, and now that'll update and show us what the iPhone 16 Plus would look like. So any changes in resolution and things like that we'll see inside here. Go back into our suites, manage those. We can move these around, so we may want our phone to be the first one. Just position it where we want. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. But let's create and add our new custom suites. So let's add a suite. We'll give it a name. Click Add. 
And now you'll see we start off with one device. It always defaults to the iPhone 12 Pro and you can't delete this right now. Now, if you're getting value for this video and you like this kind of content, why not consider hitting that thumbs up button down below? It tells YouTube you like it and it'll give you more notifications as new videos come out. However, if you're not getting value from it, you can hit the thumbs down button twice as that seems to work pretty well too. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button. Why not? It's free. Anyway, let's get back on with the video. All you need to do though is add in another device and then you can delete this kind of default one. So let's go back and say we want that iPhone 16 Pro, for example, and then we can get rid of the iPhone 12. So Dump that off. Then we'll say maybe we want to put in something like a laptop with a, H, a high DPI screen. So you can see that's added that in, tells us the resolution for it. And we've also got a large desktop, which is a custom one that I've created. So we'll add that in as well. And let's say we want to create another custom one with maybe an even higher resolution. Let's add a custom device. We'll give this a name. We'll call this 4K full screen. We'll pop in the resolution. We'll leave the DPI as it is. We'll change this over now to a desktop. It's not touch capable and it's not mobile. So we'll add that. And you can see now we've added in our 4K full screen. And it's also available under our custom devices. So we can add into any future sort of suites that we create. So now that's done. Let's close this down. Now you can see that defaults to our new setup. And if we want to swap between those, we can come up with wings use between the default or we can come back into our custom. And we can scroll across and see what this would look like there on various different devices. So you get the idea how this works. It's pretty nifty. And like I say, you can interact with each one of these live and see exactly what it's going to look like. So, okay, so we've seen how this basically works. Let's take a look at some of your options. Now, we've seen these sort of shortcuts you've got on each individual device, but we've also got some of these over on the top so we can affect any or all devices that are applicable. So we can say rotate devices and you see all devices now are rotated. You can do it. You can also come in and choose the option to enable the inspect elements option. So you can see as we come over, like you get inside Chrome and so on, when you have the dev tools open, you can come in and interact with these and you'll get all the information about it, the colors, the CSS, those kinds of things. Again, disable that. If you want to, you can also take screenshots of this. So we can take it of all the web views. You've also got the option then to change between light and dark mode. I don't have that set up on any of these particular designs, so that's not going to show up. But if you are working with the light and dark mode, you can switch them all over at the same time. You've also got the view shortcuts, so we can see exactly what shortcuts are applicable to the app itself. Close that down. And we've got the option then for those different sort of visual impairments, which we can then apply to all of the sites simultaneously. So you can easily see what that's going to do. We've seen the option for our suites. So let's take a quick look at these other options there on our address bar. The first one is the option to delete all storage. The second one is to delete your cookies. The third one is to clear the cache. You can then jump back to your home page, or you can add this particular page to your bookmarks. So let's bookmark this one. And you see we can give it a name and we'll click save. And that's now been added to our bookmark. So we're working on multiple sites. We can call these back up at any point. And if you want to access those, what we need to do is come up to the three dots in the top corner. And this then allows us to configure some settings, including jumping into our bookmarks and see any bookmark that we've created listed. Now inside here, you've got a couple of basic options. You can set the default zoom level. You can set the UI theme between light mode and dark mode. You can also set the dock dev tool. So you can choose if they're docked or floating. Allow insecure SSL, so if you're working on a site that doesn't have SSL enabled on it, which you really shouldn't, but if you want to allow insecure, you can do. You can clear your history, and you can also set up how you want things laid out. At the moment, we've got these in a column layout, but you may want to put these in flex, so you can see they'll just go up and down the screen, so as the different sizes and so on, the space allows, or you can drop it into masonry, and it'll do the same kind of thing. For me, column view is probably better for this particular setup. Then you've got some basic settings inside here. You can choose screenshots, the location for those, and so on. So we'll just not worry too much about that. And then if you want to keep up with the notifications, you can see any notifications listed. But fundamentally, that is the Responsively app setup installed and working. Now, if you don't already have a tool like this in your tool belt, I would recommend downloading and installing this. The fact it's basically set up on your local machine is a good thing, in my opinion. You don't have to be online to kind of do these things. Obviously, you need to be online to check the site out. But I'm assuming, and I haven't tested this out, so I could be wrong, but if you're working on something like local WP, where you're a local testing environment, and you drop in the URL for that, then you can still test things out on here as well. You can have a totally offline development environment. If you'd like me to check that out and come back with a video on it, if it all works the way I expect it to, let me know in the comment section down below. But as always, I welcome your feedback. Have you tried responsibly? Is this a new tool to you? Is this something you take a look at installing on your own development environment and see how it all works for you? Let me know in the comment section down below.
As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.